Amazon, the last call. We will premeditatedly begin today's episode outside of the Amazonia. We're in the Pantanal, the marshlands. We will be accompanied by Nilton and his men on this journey through this incredible part of the planet, and we invite you to do so as well. So if you care to join us, you'll hear stories about Pantanero horses, of men and women and animals, about deep nature here in the Pantanal. Shall we, Nilton? Let's go. Come on. <laughs> We would like to present to you a close relative of the Amazonia that has captivated us throughout this photogenic Mother Nature series, the Pantanal, that emancipated child of the Great River, the largest wetlands in the world, a lake estrine system, independent of the one that is formed by the Amazon River, which extends south, and which has inherited a great amount of its ecological wealth. It is a salt marsh territory as large as Holland, Switzerland, Portugal, and Belgium, all in one. 210,000 kilometers of luxury and fantasy for the lovers of unaltered nature. Its name may confuse us. It's not really a marsh, but rather a large plain only 100 meters above sea level, subjected to periods of inundation and floods that are clearly seasonal. The Pantanal that we will travel through is the one that corresponds to Brazil. Nonetheless, we cannot forget the importance that Paraguay and Bolivia have for the whole, neighboring countries that have received a large part of the biological inheritance of this wild Eden of nature. Six hundred and fifty-six bird species live in the Pantanal, more than North America's entire population. Besides that, Many of the latter travel to this Brazilian paradise during the winter migrations, establishing spectacular breeding colonies that would be the joy of any ornithologist. In the same watering hole, we can find cabezas secas, spoonbills, and herons of a thousand colors and intertwined roots, living side by side in this last refuge created by two large rivers, the Cuiabá and, above all, the Paraguay River. All the living beings have some relation here to the water and its landscapes. In contrast to the Amazonia, the Pantanal is the kingdom of wide horizons, of large salt marshes where the vegetation spreads out, permitting our eyes to see everything without limitations. This is a floodplain which reminds us of the Llano Venezolano, or Venezuelan plain, another South American giant. The Orinoco, with its immense dimensions, an enriching and generous nature, which the planet chose to clone as if it were someone who chose to repeat something that came out very well. The fact is that this ecosystem is a complete success. The kingdom of the waterlands at everyone's disposal and before our eyes. Visit the Pantanal if you can. It will be an unforgettable experience and you'll come away with a flooded heart. Millions of animals and plants live here in peace with all, 
with a sense of solidarity. Some will peek out from your screens. They will enter your homes without causing a fuss, without dirtying anything, without invading your refrigerators. Don't worry. It's as if they were well-bred ambassadors of an exotic diplomatic corps. They are the thriving Pantanal, privileged kin to the extents Amazonia. The Tuiuiuis, peaceful banners. For many, these long-legged birds are the symbol of the Pantanal. They're not lacking in traits because they're almost a meter and a half tall and two meters, 80 centimeters wide. It is Brazil's largest flying bird, also called the Jabaru. It belongs to the stork family and the African marabous, and like them, it is admired by the people it shares country and sky with. The Tuiuiuis are magnificent fishermen, fishing here and there without exhausting the stock and without cheating with hooks. They use only their beaks, powerful half a meter long daggers, which cannot be escaped, no matter what the size of their prey. They crush the fish with their beaks before swallowing them, finishing them off while still in the water to avoid problems when swallowing. These birds have no teeth, with their beaks, they have to capture, cook, and swallow all in one action. Even so, the slippery fish scales sometimes makes them fail. The breeding season has just ended, but we can still visit their mansion. Neither the anarchic composition of their necks, equally dyed red and black here and there, nor do their nests go unnoticed. With a basin diameter of two meters, this architectural accumulation of dry wood is a true work of art which can weigh several hundred kilos. Here they bring an average of three chicks a year into the world. Just like the storks, the tuiuiuis make a clacking sound, using their beaks as if they were castanets, with which they communicate over large distances. They are master flyers and can travel up to 75 kilometers a day, taking good advantage of the warm air currents that surround the Pantanal. The tuiuiuis are rare birds that find in the Brazilian Pantanal their greatest refuge. Only 12 nests are known of in Central America, a scarce population that barely reaches 200 individuals. In countries such as Mexico, Suriname, French Guiana, and Venezuela, its mythical outline is practically an exceptional ornithological event. With the melancholy sound of the horn collar, Man opens his way through Tuiuiui territory. 